Hello, my name is Rachel Ahav and I'm the great-granddaughter of Tweet Prager's own. Today, I'd like to read a passage from his book, Memoirs of a Jewish Prisoner of the Gulag. This passage is about Reb Mordechai Shenkar. Tweet Prager's own met Mordechai Shenkar at the Vorkuta prison camp in the far north of Russia. Reb Mordechai Shenkar, an orthodox religious man, was a notable person among us. For quite a long time, I had not met such a true and devoted believer in our fickle world. He was originally from Berdichev, about 50 years old, pleasant looking with an upright and tall body, a highly conspicuous curved nose and a protruding shaved chin. His hair was graying, but there was no sign of baldness. He was an experienced accountant and had worked in this profession all his life. During the war, he had been evacuated with his wife to the eastern part of the Soviet Union. However, his parents and 12 other relatives who stayed in Berdichev had been murdered by the Nazis. Reb Mordechai had been arrested in 1950, together with about 40 other Jews from Lvov and Leningrad, and, as a result, he was given 10 years in a prison camp. Reb Mordechai believed in God with all his heart and soul. He prayed regularly, three times a day, and observed the Jewish holidays. He fasted according to the Jewish calendar, and most importantly of all, during his entire time in the prison camp, only ate kosher food. In camp conditions, such strict devotion to religion was tantamount to heroism. Employed as an accountant, he abstained from writing on Shabbat and did it in such a way that the people working with him did not even notice. The three obligatory daily 18 prayers were particularly challenging for Reb Mordechai. They had to be recited while standing on one's feet. It was especially difficult to perform this task during work hours in the overcrowded camp without getting any attention from the camp authorities who forbade any manifestation of religiosity in the camp. Despite all the obstacles, Reb Mordechai prayed several times every day. Besides the daily shacharit, mincha, and ma'ariv prayers, he also recited psalms, which he knew by heart, most often the Song of Ascents. During the dark northern evenings, he searched for a secluded place to recite ma'ariv, the evening prayer, and he often found such a place by the soccer field that was used as the garbage yard during the winter. My heart ached when I watched Reb Mordechai Shenkar praying by the soccer field. He swayed back and forth and whispered the words of a prayer. It was very cold and it would have been much easier for him to recite the prayers while walking, but he stood where he was and lifted his eyes to the sky. In this respect, he really was a holy man. Eating kosher food was also a sacred act in the reality of the prison camp. He did not eat in the camp's canteen and only took bread from there. He had his own pan and prepared barley soup by himself. He was receiving some kosher food from home and on Passover would even get matzos. Obviously, despite all his caution and care, it was impossible to adhere to all God's mitzvahs. But the difficulties of the prison camp also served to his benefit. They gave him strength and made him resilient. He prayed to God with all his heart and gained God's forgiveness and compassion. I spent many hours talking to Reb Mordechai. He spoke Yiddish and Hebrew with a Berdicha of ascent, which reminded me of my childhood in Shepitovka. Even though Reb Mordechai lacked an ear for music, he enjoyed listening to Hebrew and Yiddish songs. He often asked me to sing him the Psalms Mikdash Melech and the Vinu Malkeinu. Reb Mordechai was a man of charity and spent a significant part of his camp wages on it. He also collected money for charity purposes from other prisoners. If a prisoner got sick or hospitalized, Reb Mordechai was the first to visit him and attend to his needs. 
He was always in good spirits, especially on Saturdays and holidays. And if in the middle of the 20th century, in a northern prison camp, in snowstorms, ice, darkness, and extreme cold, there was a man like Reb Mordechai, it signifies the strength of the human mind and proves that belief in God is one of mankind's greatest virtues. Perhaps I conclude my short sketch of Reb Mordechai with the following image, which is deeply carved into my heart. It was on the holiday of Purim in 1953. It was snowing heavily. Three of us, Reb Mordechai, Lebush Kantargu, and I were standing in the middle of Yudin Street and watching the heavy snowflakes fall under the light of the street lamp. Reb Mordechai was in high spirits and full of enthusiasm and excitement. We were talking about past, past and present commons and about the redemption that we hoped was close. In a prison camp, one always strives to restrain one's feelings. But that evening, Reb Mordechai was not able to hold his emotions back. He embraced us and with tears in his eyes, showering us with kisses, the kisses of a brother and mentor. That evening, I saw Reb Mordechai as a symbol of our future redemption.